This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 29 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. On today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing some insights and thoughts about a very important topic. Earlier this week, I launched a little survey to see which topic we're gonna be talking about. So I'm gonna reveal that topic in a moment. On Monday, we have two very special guests. Their names are Kimi and Pua. They are the founders of Best Life Ever, which is a super cool company. If you are a dreamer, if you have big ideas, this is an episode you have to check out. Kimi and Pua definitely resonate with our heartbeat at JumbleThink, and they give us amazing insights, amazing thoughts, and some tips on how we can take those big ideas, take those big dreams, and make them a reality. So make sure to check out Monday's episode with Kimmy and Pua, the founders of Best Life Ever. You're not going to want to miss it. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and so very excited that you have joined us for the Jumble Think Podcast today. As we get ready to dive into today's episode, I want to remind you wherever you're listening to this podcast, click that subscribe button. If you're streaming this through the JumbleThink website, go ahead and find your favorite place to listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Google Play, wherever you listen to your podcast, swing on over there, click that subscribe button. That way you never miss another episode with our incredible guests on the JumbleThink podcast. So I want to tell you a little bit about the background for today's episode. A couple weeks ago, I started with this idea of how can we dive into the world of better understanding communicating ideas. If you're a big dreamer, if you have big ideas, it's such an important and critical tool to have in your arsenal to make sure that others really engage, they catch the vision behind that big idea and dream, and and it just makes the whole process of innovation and exploration and creation of that idea so much more encouraging. Over the last couple of days, I've really been watching some uh, different conversations on social channels, some of the groups we're a part of, some of the other things, and this other topic started to really pique my interest, and it was on how to come overcome disappointment as an entrepreneur. So yesterday, what I did is I went to a couple of our favorite social media channels, and I just asked through a quick little poll, would you rather learn about communicating your ideas better or how to overcome disappointment in entrepreneurship? Now, I thought that this discussion was just going to be blown up on one side, and it truly wasn't. To be honest, when I added up all the different places and got a tally, we were only one vote difference between the two. So here's what we're going to do. Today, we're going to be talking about how to better communicate your ideas. And then the next time we do a topical episode, we're going to dive into the world of overcoming disappointment in entrepreneurship. I think both topics are really important. So I want to make sure that we cover both of these uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. So today, we're diving into communicating your ideas clearly. And next time, we'll talk about overcoming disappointment as an entrepreneur. So here we go. Let's dive into today's topic all about communicating your big idea. Okay, so where do we start? Well, did you ever feel like you had this big idea, this message, this thing burning inside of you, and you just can't communicate it right? You feel like you're saying words, but they're not really measuring up to what you're feeling inside or the, the honest picture of what you're trying to communicate? Or maybe for you, you think you have the idea ready. You have that big dream ready to offer to the world, to share with your friends, your family, your coworkers, everyone that will listen. And when you start sharing that story, when you start sharing that idea, their eyes gloss over and you can just see that they're not getting what you're trying to communicate. And you're, you're thinking to yourself, but the thing I'm trying to share is so awesome. Why aren't you getting it? Why aren't you hearing me? Why aren't you interested? Or maybe for you, 
you feel like you're isolated and alone. Like no one understands you. Like you're the only one that gets it and you have something amazing to share, but you just don't know how to step into it and really present it to the world in a way that's tangible to people. All of these are signs that you've got a big problem and the problem isn't necessarily the idea, but it's it's putting to words, putting to uh, paper, putting to a way to communicate to others that idea that engages them, that draws them in. I know for me, it is such a frustrating place when I feel like I'm repeating myself and people aren't hearing me or that I'm not really saying what I'm trying to say. And if you're anything like me, it's so frustrating when you get to that moment where you're ready to release this, this dream, this idea, this concept to the world and you just can't get it right. So what do you do? How do you put to words, put to message, put to story this thing that's burning inside of you, whether it's an idea, a dream, a concept, a, a message, if something significant, how can you move past that chaos of, of miscommunication, undercommunication, of, of not being able to clearly communicate? How do you move past that and begin to craft a narrative that draws others in? that begins to engage them, that begins to, to spread the fire that's inside of you to others so that they want to be a part of your story, your message, your idea, your movement, whatever it is for you that they want to be a part. Hopefully throughout today's episode, I'll be able to give you some, some actual steps to begin to craft that story, to craft that narrative, to begin to, to be able to take the things deep inside it and share them with the world so that they understand, so they're engaged, so that they're drawn in. Some of these things are going to require you to do some work on your end. Some of those things are going to require you to rethink your idea, rethink your dreams, and really understand them at a different level. So are you ready? Are you ready today to... Start moving that idea from the internal. Start being able to communicate it in a clearer way. Are you ready to make the actions, to make the change that you need so that you can be heard by those around you, so that you can make a movement out of your message, so you can make those ideas catch fire with the people around you? Well, if you're ready, let's dive into some real steps, some things you can do right now to begin to make your message, your big idea, stick with others. Step number one, don't rush the process. We live in a society that rushes everything. Everything's immediate. As soon as we have an idea, a thought, we can share it. We can get what we want, when we want, how we want. And the reality is, is if you have a big dream and idea, it will not be immediate. Do not rush the process. Often we rush the big idea and dream to share to others before we've crafted it. Now, we need others to be a part of that process in crafting the narrative, but we don't need to take that big idea and dream to the world right away so that we get it out because it's not ready for the world just because you have the idea. What are some things you can do to not rush the process? One, wait for the right timing. There are seasons in which the culture, the people around you simply aren't ready for the big idea and dream you have. If you are a person that's a visionary that has big ideas and dreams and sees what others can't see, sometimes you need to take that time to really craft the story and narrative and let society and culture to catch up to you so you can share a message that's relevant to them at the right time. Another thing you can do to not ru rush the process is take time to process the idea. Often when we feel like we have a big idea and dream and we're ready to move forward, we feel like it's already ready to take to the world. And you can't rush the process of crafting that idea and understanding the dream at a deep level, which leads us to another thing you can do to not rush the process. And that's research and know your idea and your dream better than anyone else. Figure out all the little nooks, the crannies, the crevices, the things that are missing in that idea and know it better than anyone else inside and outside and upside and downside. Know that idea at every angle so that you can Truly craft a narrative. And finally, that leads us to the last part of don't rush the process, and that's revisit the idea often. Sometimes we have an idea and it never evolves past 
the initial idea, past the initial dream. And that dream and idea should be evolving and growing and changing and becoming a living thing that takes the, sh uh, the, the shape of what you want it to become. It cannot be stagnant. It cannot stay in the same place. It needs to grow and change. Okay, so step number one was don't rush the process. So, so, so important. Don't rush the process. Number two, step number two is be clear and simple. In my opinion, simplicity may be one of the most complex things that you can ever do. Simplicity and clarity take you being intentional about what you're doing. When you have a big idea and dream, it's easy to go, 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 and never take the time to be intentional about crafting a clear and simple message. So what does it mean to really create a clear and simple message around your big idea and dream? At the simplest form, what it means is to remove all of the unnecessary noise and clutter around that big idea and dream. Another way to say it is, boil it down. Keep on reducing it to its simplest form. The more you can reduce your big idea and dream into the simplest form, the easier it is to communicate that big idea and dream. Other ways to make a message clear and simple are to not use cliches or ambiguous phrases that just seem empty and shallow. Another thing that I would recommend is staying away from industry speak. What I mean by industry speak is like, let's say you work in the world of technology, maybe web design, and you start using industry jargon, talking about frameworks and code bases, and people just look at you and they look confused because they aren't in your space. They don't understand your industry speak. You haven't created a clear and simple message because they don't understand the same lingo in which you're using. So what that means is boil it down to a simple message. For us, when I would approach a client in the web world, what I would do is really put it in an analogy or a story that is simple for them to understand that they can relate to. And we're going to talk more about analogies in a second, but what you're really doing is you're making that clear and simple message accessible to them. If the message is clear and simple, it should be so easy that anyone can understand that idea. Often we overcomplicate our stories, we overcomplicate our ideas, our messages, and in that complexity, we, use, we lose the simplicity of what we're trying to say. And in losing that, we lose the people we're talking to. In clear and simple messaging about your big idea, you're making it basic. And people like basic concepts that they can grab a hold of that's, that are incredibly complex. They love when they can take these complex thoughts and, and really understand it. So if you can communicate in that way that it brings it to a, a clear and simple way, they grasp it. All of a sudden, they feel like superheroes too because they're able to grab something that's difficult and make it understandable for themselves. So step number two, be clear and simple. In a lot of ways, step number three is a very close relative to step number two. Step number three is present a single idea. Often when we have big ideas and dreams or messages we're trying to communicate, we dilute it by things that are secondary. And we really need to get back to that singular point of reference behind the idea, behind the dream, behind that message of, of what it really does and what it stands for. You can always add in more things as your dream, your idea, your message grows. But if you start with all of these other things, these little side ideas that, that support the main idea, what you will find out is in diluting that, people will have a hard time catching the idea and joining forces with you. What you need to do is communicate that single idea that is relevant to them so that they can be a part of your story, that they can be a part of that idea. Think about it this way. If Facebook would have launched and said, well, what we're going to build is this social network that allows you to communicate with your friends, share photos. It's going to allow you to post videos. You're going to be able to support your business. You're going to be able to promote your business. You're going to be able to uh, like and follow other people. You're going to be able to uh, take and share their ideas. You're going to be able to uh, sell advertising on it. You're going to be able to 
have messengers in there so you can talk to each other. You're going to be able to sell products through it and tie in all of these other websites to support it. Oh, by the way, we're also going to have this thing that we're going to buy out down the road. It's called Instagram where you can share photos and have a social network there and do all of this stuff. They would have never taken off. People would have been so confused and overwhelmed by what they were building that they would just go, I, it's beyond me. I'm not going to be able to do it. Instead, what Facebook did is they came in and said, we want to connect friends for common good. That's the simple idea that they shared. We want to connect people. We want to connect you to your friends so that you can have a life of common good. We want to make it easy for you to communicate with each other. That's basically what they sold themselves as when they launched Facebook. It's very simple. It's very easy. You're not going to be able to inject all that HTML like you could with MySpace, anything like that. It's simple. It's beautiful. It's easy. You can connect to each other. And people responded. They looked at it and said, yeah, I want to be a part of that. It's easy. I can connect with my old college roommates and I can stay in touch with my family. And it's easy and it's simple and it just works and I'm in. And so Facebook started. Now they've added all of this extra stuff. But when they communicated that message, they had a single idea. How do we communicate? How do we connect each other? And that's what they solved. And that's why people got involved. So step number three was all about presenting a single idea. Now step number four is make the audience the hero. I think this is the step that most people forget about when they're trying to communicate that big idea and, and they're missing the target. It's usually because they've forgotten to make the audience the hero. So how do you make the audience the hero of your big idea, your big dream? Well, you've got to make the message about them. When communicating a big idea, it's, it's about taking what's inside of you and getting others engaged, making it relevant to them, making it relatable to them. You've got to make the message about them if they are to be a part of your big idea and dream. If you make the communication all about you and how you feel and why you're passionate about it, they aren't going to want to engage and be a part of making that big idea a reality. So how do you begin to make this all about the audience? Well, first off, you've got to figure out what are the questions they have? What are the things they need to know? Why is this idea relevant to them? Answer those questions, communicate it to them, and then ask them for feedback. Ask them questions. Let them ask you questions. Adapt that big idea and dream to make it relevant to people beyond you. Check in. How are they doing? How does this idea make them feel? How does your dream make them feel? How does your message make them feel? Understand how this is going to solve their problem, how it's going to help them so that they will see value in the idea and dream too. What you're really doing is you're helping to engage their emotions. You're making them feel like they're emotionally attached to your idea and dream. You're bringing them to be a part of your story and you're helping them in that process to apply your idea to their story. So it's this cohesion of your idea engaging their life, bringing value to what they have that helps them engage with that story and go deeper into the idea you have. Now, I mentioned those, those questions and feedback and adapting. Well, that will help you really tune that idea, that message, that dream into something that's either marketable or realistic. Having other people give feedback doesn't draw away from your idea. It doesn't make it less of your idea. It makes your idea, your dream, your message so much more of a stronger thing, a force to be communicated. So when you can start to sharpen and hone and refine that idea, you bring more value to more people. Now, when you craft your story, your communication to making the, the, the audience, the hero, you've got to be able to morph and change the narrative and story to be relevant to the audience in which you're sharing it with, whether it's a family member, a coworker, whether it's at a big event where you're speaking or whether it's one-on-one, -on -one. you're crafting a narrative for your idea so that others feel like it applies to them, whether it's, again, that individual or that group, whatever the setting, whatever the place, communicate a message that is significant to them. And there are tons of ways to do that. 
something we can talk about in another episode for sure. So step number four is all about making the audience the hero, which leads us to step number five. And it's really critical because we've, we've made the audience the hero, but we don't want to forget ourselves. So step number five is get personal. So what do I mean by get personal? Well, if we have a big idea and dream and we want to communicate it well, that idea, that dream, that message has to burn inside of us. It has to be alive. It has to be something that gets us fired up. If that idea, that dream, that message is truly impacting us, then we can take that impact, that passion, that fervor, and we can communicate it with honesty because it's something that we really connect with. When it impacts us, we can allow it to impact others around us. Making it personal makes it real to us and others can feel that. They can see it. They can experience it. And by their experience of of seeing what it's done for us, they can begin to be part of that journey to really engage with it and say, if this is so personal for them, then it can be personal for me too. This is also where you begin to share your story. The story of where this dream, this idea, this message started, you can share how it, it's grown and evolved and changed, how it's really been a catalyst for change in your own life or breakthrough or been something that has encouraged you to, to make that change that took you to a new level or a new career or a new place in, in, in what you're trying to accomplish. When the story has become personal and you've been able to communicate it from a personal standpoint through that story, you can begin to paint a picture where they can see in vivid color the reality of what you're creating. You're creating a new future, a new opportunity, a a, a new way of thinking or dreaming or communicating. When you communicate from a place of personal experience, it's so powerful because it's a story that is yours. It belongs to you. And no one else can take that away. No one else can diminish that. But that story then can be consumed by others. They can see the picture you've painted. They can then picture themselves in that story. And then they can step into being a part of that journey, being a part of that dream, that idea, that movement, that that message that you're creating. When you've personified it for yourself and communicated it to others, they want to be a part of that story. They want to put themselves in that picture you've painted, and they want to join that movement you're creating. So now you've gone through step one, don't rush the process, and you've moved to step two, be clear and simple. Then to step three, present a single idea. Then to step number four, which is make the audience the hero which leads us to step five, which is get personal. And then ultimately that leads you to a place, step number six, let others own the idea. You've created this message, this idea, this dream. You've been able to paint the picture. You've been able to make the audience the hero. You've been able to simplify it and communicate it. Now others want to be a part of that story. They want to be a part of what you're creating. They want to help you on that journey. They want to be a part of that journey And now the idea, that dream, that message is no longer just yours. You're letting others own the idea too. When you let others own the idea, it's kind of scary because you're, you're feeling like you're losing your idea. It's no longer yours. It's, you don't have that ownership. But when you allow others to have ownership, when you allow them to be part of that story, when you allow them to own the idea, that communication step of saying, not only is this my idea, but it can be yours too. Not only is this my dream, but you can have this dream too. Not only is this my message, but it can be your message too. When you invite others to take ownership of that idea, it brings power power to the idea because you've multiplied yourself. You've pushed beyond a single point idea, a single point dream, and you've multiplied that. So you have the power of community now. That power of community is so powerful. When a community gets around an idea, when a community gets around a dream, you have the support, the resources, the ideas that are beyond the the first idea, beyond the simple idea, to grow that idea, to have more impact, to have more reach. When you allow that idea to have ownership by others, you expand the reach, you expand the potential of the idea, and now you've allowed 
that idea to be communicated to more people than you'd ever reach on your own. You've allowed that idea to grow and, and become living beyond just yourself. And when you do that, what you do is you bring power to the idea. You bring power to the dream. You bring power to that message. And you ultimately are creating a movement. When you communicate, it's not good enough for you just to have your own idea and try to share it with others. It's not good enough just to make the audience the hero. It's the place of getting others on board with the message, with the idea that brings ultimate freedom to see the idea become everything it could be. You can look through movements throughout history and great leaders and great innovators and inventors. And when they brought others to be a part of their story, when they brought others into the ownership of the idea, it didn't diminish the, the significance of the person that started the idea. It didn't diminish their dream. What it did is it made it grow so much stronger. And our final step is number seven, craft a story. Now, all of the other elements, all the other steps are giving a foundation for how you craft your story. But there are other things you can do in that process of crafting your story. You can use analogies. And what analogies do is that they allow people to understand in an easy way your story. You can make it relatable to them so that they understand the story better. I'm also very passionate about positive stories. So often we're focused on the negative. Woe is me, the Eeyore complex. And you see it on the news. You see it in media. You see it in the things that are happening around us. Everything seems to be negative. Well, let's, let's stop focusing on the negative and start creating a positive story. There are several ways you can do this. One of the ways you can do it is to first start out talking about what was or what is currently and what could be. It's the change. Well, here's where we live today, but here's where this idea and dream is going to take us. Paint that picture of the change that's going to happen there. What you're doing is ultimately leading to what I call the, the new reality, and that's what if. What if things didn't have to be this way? What if we could make a change? And that's what the idea, that big dream is. It's a change from the current reality into a new reality. So you're painting a picture of the new reality. And then the next step under focusing on the positive is creating a vision. The imagine. Imagine a world that would be whatever. And when you create that story that includes the imagination, the vision for a new future, a new reality, it's such a powerful tool. But when you're creating this story, there is something that's significant that I think so many people forget, and that is being prepared. It's the old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And so often we have an idea and we have a passion and we're so caught up in that passion, that idea, that dream, that we haven't taken the time to be prepared for when we have the opportunity to share our idea our dream, our passion, our message. And, and we have to be really prepared to step into a place where we can commun communicate effectively to others. Without being prepared, we cannot effectively communicate the message, that big idea we have in a clear way. So you have to be prepared. You have to practice. You have to know the ins and outs. That means knowing the facts. That means knowing the story you're telling. That means how it's personal. You have to know all of these pieces so that you can effectively communicate it. Now, here's the thing. It sounds like you have to have everything figured out, everything known before you even get started. And the reality is that while all of these steps are powerful, while all of these steps will help you, you're never going to have the idea, the dream, the message perfect. It is going to evolve. It's going to grow. It's going to change. It is part of the evolution of a living idea and dream. So when you're doing this, don't wait for perfection, but do walk these steps and they will help you communicate effectively that idea and dream you have. So let's, let's review these steps. Number one, don't rush the process. So significant. Take the time. Do it right. Make sure you understand your idea. Number two, be clear and simple. Don't use ambiguous phrases. Don't use industry speak, but in a clear and simple way, remove all the clutter and be able to communicate a boiled down idea that's 
going to reach your audience. Number three, present a single idea. Don't dilute your idea by multiple little side ideas. Keep it simple, keep it clear, and present that simple idea, which leads us to number four, make the audience the hero. It's all about them when you're communicating the idea and dream. How does this idea and dream relate to them? How can they buy into it? And why are they significant? The idea could be awesome, but if it doesn't impact them, if it doesn't relate to them, they're not gonna buy in. Number five, get personal. It's got to be personal to you for others to really want to be a part of that story. Make it real. Make it personal. Bring yourself into the story. Number six, let others own the idea. When they own the idea, your idea grows. It has more reach and it has more potential for impact. And finally, number seven, craft your story. Don't wait to tell your story on the fly. Make sure you know the story. Make sure you know all the pieces and communicate it effectively. When you have a crafted story that's prepared, you're gonna be able to step into it. You're not gonna be searching for the right things to say. You're gonna be prepared so that you can speak directly to the people you're trying to reach. Now we could go on and on and on talking about how you can communicate your big idea in effective ways. These seven I think are the, the best ways you can lay a, a solid foundation for truly communicating that big idea in an effective way. So now it's your turn to step into communicating your big idea effectively. You have some great tools here that we've given you, some great resources and steps you can use. We want to hear about your success stories. What has helped you communicate your story well? What's helped you communicate that big idea effectively to others? Did one of these tips stand out to you? Did one of these ideas challenge you? We want to hear about that too. But ultimately, we want you to start the journey of taking that idea and moving it from the internal and start getting it to the external, sharing it with people, but doing it in an effective way, communicating your big idea in an effective way to reach touch and change others around you. So take these steps, start moving forward, start applying them to your life and making the changes that you need to make so you can get your big idea out to the world. So you can get your dream, your message, your cause to reach the people that need to hear what you have to offer. We believe that the world needs you and you have something special inside. So get out there, start practicing these things, start trying these things, and begin to expand that reach of the idea and dream inside of you. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and it's given you some practical tools you can use. If you found this episode helpful, make sure you check out some of our past episodes. We also have two free guides to help you on your journey of chasing those big ideas and dreams. If you swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide, you can download both guides completely for free. The first guide is Overcoming the Unknown and the second guide is how to know when you found your dream. They're completely free, so why not download them now? Swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide to download your two free guides today. On Monday, we have an absolutely incredible episode planned for you. Our guests are Kimmy and Pua. They are the founders of Best Life Ever. If you're big into chasing big ideas and dreams, this is an episode you have to check out. Kimmy and Pua are kindred spirits in this whole movement of getting people to pursue their passions, their destiny, and purpose. So you're going to love this episode. Make sure you check it out this Monday as we talk to Kimmy and Pua from Best Life Ever. Well, that brings another episode to a close today. I want to thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. It's for you, the listeners, that we do these episodes to really encourage you to take those big ideas and dreams you have, make them a reality, and stop letting them collect dust on the shelf. So get out there. Start doing something, whether it's big or small, to move that dream and idea you have forward. En arrière, sur les côtés. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.